when will you and I ever be able to have a talk about your death date without you getting pissed and me having a <laughs> terrible, a terrible rest of the week or whatever. And I just want people to know that even though we talk about all these things and stuff, it's very hard um, for me to stay alive some days. And I want everyone to know that, that just because I'm sharing this, um, go easy on me because it's a struggle to get out of bed. And I, this has saved me in so many ways. But my son and I have not been able to talk about his death date without him getting upset. And I was like, I thought it was rest in peace, Griffin. And <laughs> But people are starting to ask, Griffin, how did you pass and stuff? And I've written about it on your page, but maybe one day we'll talk about it. If you want to have your day fucked up and I'll have my day fucked up, we'll talk about it. <laughs> I don't know. Can you can you talk about it yet even still without getting pissed, Griff? I can, it still fucks me up. I'm much better at it, he says. Yeah. I don't enjoy it because it was so much out of my hands because right. my death relied on the action of others. Right. And if I were the other... Right. That's not how this would have turned out. I, I, from who I am, would not have made those decisions. Right. And he goes, that was my hang up. I have, it's taken me a really long time to say that it was okay for them to behave that way and for this to be a result of it. Right. Um, it's taken me a long time. Well, it'll take me till I die, but um, I don't like people to say to me, um, they were scared. Um, you know, I'm scared of a lot of things in my life, but I, I couldn't leave someone foaming at their mouth and, you know, choking on a carrot even. And one of the kids was 22 and that's not really a kid kid. And I didn't know any of the kids. So I just, I don't like, I've gotten even a fight with my dad about that. Your grandpa about, well, they were scared, you know, really? They went a little out of their way for people that were scared, you know, but it's an excuse. Yeah. Or maybe people say that to me that they think it'll make me feel better, but it makes me enraged because I can't even say in a sentence that my kids would ever do something like that. To anybody. He says, you know, we can try to say that they're scared, but also they were high as kites too. Right. Right. And, and I don't like when, excuse. Right. And I don't like people when they say that either, because to me, to drag someone's body, you were not a little boy, you're a big boy, 230 at least, over six feet tall, um, by their feet up a driveway. That's very intentional, you know, to hide their body. I mean, and then go back out and shoot up more and party more. And then come home and sit with your dead body for hours and hours and hours to make up his story. So I'm calling it murder. That's what it is to me. It's murder. It, I just can't see it any other way. And it doesn't make me feel better to see it that way. Um, because when I look back at my life, I had blackout drunks when I was a kid and my friends helped me. And I didn't realize that's what I was having but we used to do this hunch punch, like where you put fruit in a, uh, yeah, in a big cooler. And yes. I, don't, I don't know what they do, but I was such a lightweight. And um, my mom always said that we were allergic to alcohol. And I didn't know if she just said that because she didn't want us to drink, but I think we have American Indian in us and you don't have the enzyme to process it. You know what I mean? And so, I don't know if she said it for us to be good or whatever, but I drank and it didn't take much. And I was literally passed out in the front yard with my face in the grass. And they had, they found me and like cleaned me up and took me home or whatever, but I didn't know where I was. And I don't think I drank that much at all. Like some people just can't handle it. But Griffin says that, you know, to your point, even those others who were drunk could recognize face down in the yard, not moving is not a good thing. Right. Like Even clean. when you're high as a kite, right? You know, if you're conscious enough to make a decision to, you know, drag somebody somewhere and prop them up and set them there or whatever, you're conscious enough to go get some help. Right. Yeah. Like I always said, um, 
they you would have had more more of a chance of survival if they even hung you from a tree like this yeah. nobody knew where you were and yeah. yeah i love you griffin i'm sorry you went through that we will i'll write down the questions and we'll go over it because it, it makes me want to throw up and it probably makes you want to throw up and i don't even know what happened to those kids even now i can't even say their name i don't they don't cross my mind and i just i gave that to god too big for me because you're talking about no right and wrong for killing if i didn't have dylan there would have been a, a woman in california killing some people it would have been me and i would have been joining you griff <laughs> <laughs> I may not have graduated from the level. <laughs> like the viewers couldn't tell who that woman would have been. Oh, yeah. Did <laughs> I give that you. away? <laughs> you I, totally gave it away. Did I give that away? Did you hear in my voice how I would enjoy it too and like drag him up and ask him how it felt? And yeah, those kind of things. <laughs> I'm sorry, people, but the coroner called me and said his back was so messed up they had to cut open his head to, because they wanted to see what happened to him. Did he get hit in football? What's wrong? So I'm not just talking out of my head or whatever you want to call it, feeling sorry for myself or whatever. I'm, I'm upset about it. Griffin says, we'll all notice, you know, that when we go through a traumatic point, that we, we jump into the eye for an eye. We jump into the, well, you did this, now it needs to happen to you. Yeah. He says it's not really an educational Right. compassionate reaction but it's very visceral it's very human right. and it's something that i think it's great we're recognizing it he yeah. goes and i'm proud that my mom is saying this out loud because hello i know that you know we've all experienced it at one point or another yeah so it's um we're not saying we approve of that Right. You know, my mom's not saying go out eye for an eye. Right. She's saying this is how she processes it and this is how she sees it and views it, connects to it, which well, is totally norm. Well, even finish the statement because if I didn't have Dylan would be the only way I could do it. And if I if I did it, then I would have to take my own life because I can't live with myself like that. Like, you know, revenge never feels like you think it will and it wouldn't bring Griffin back. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to do it, but I'm saying then I would have to end my own life, but I would do it and then take my own life if I didn't have Dylan. This is all in a fantasy world. When yes. you look, uh, of course, I'm like, here. And there's a half a dozen viewers out there calling 911 right away, making sure that you. <laughs> 5150 me by the end of the day. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going She's not anywhere. following through. No. Just no. talking by expression, which. Me is Jamie. I think that's very helpful because, you know, we all do that. Like when, you know, somebody steps on my foot. Right. You know, my first instinct is I'm going to reach over there and step on their foot so they know what they just did. Right. Like, Ouch. Right. Come on, man. Right. We're talking about that same thing, but on a bigger level. Yeah. And I have to tell myself, no, don't step on their foot. Right. But do reach out to them and let's say, hey, you stepped on my foot and I'm in a lot of pain. I'd like for you to recognize that this has happened, right. you know, and then can we talk about how you're not going to do that in the future? <laughs> like, well, that's where it goes. That's educate. Where, right. And that's where the reality is, Jamie, is that you want to know why that happened. Like you want to ask the kid, where in your life did that become okay? You know, like yeah. it hurt you, like, wow, that you would do something like that. That's what you really want to know. Because even when Griffin got in a fight with the kid, he was like, Mom, I could have killed him. But he said, I stopped. And I could see I raised a good boy because he goes, I felt so bad. Like, it wasn't getting anywhere. And the kid just kept lying. He goes, I want to know what happened to my brother. Tell me what happened to my brother. And he said, Mom, all I really want to know is the truth. And I go, and I grabbed Dylan and hugged him as he got home, brought home in a police car. And I said, um, Dylan, that's all we've ever wanted to know is the truth. And, and like, and I'm sorry, or why could that happen? Or why would you do that to my brother? Not, not killing him is not going to make us feel better. It doesn't bring Griffin back, you know? Yeah. And, and in that moment, it was like a full circle thing again, where I saw that I'm raising my children right. And that um, my kid wouldn't murder and couldn't murder. Um, 
And all he wanted to know was why, how could you do something like that to my brother? You know, I want to know the truth. Griffin says, I th I'd like to restate what you've said. He goes, I don't think you raised us right. Because okay. now we're getting back into the right, wrong, okay. good, bad. You raised us to align ourselves with care, love, and compassion. Right. That's what you did. And right. that was the signal that flipped, you know, in Dill's head for him to say, got to stop this. This doesn't work for me. Right. Like I had to tell Dylan, I could see his, um, his regret because he had the opportunity to, to hit the guy a few times and well he could have killed him he goes mom i could have killed him i had the, him by the back of his head and he he looked at me like he felt ashamed like it clicked in his head like i feel ashamed like i'm not this person and this isn't what i really want i i want my brother back really but i want to know why you let that happen to my brother you know is what i really want to know and um, it kind of all happened full circle, like speaking. This is a good way to end the reading because you know how um, you see things come full circle was he said that, um, uh, Mom, I had my opportunity and all I wanted to know was the truth of what, of what happened. And he got his, before he's 18, he ran into the kid because he could have gotten prosecuted, my son, for fighting with him and I told him it had to happen because that was your brother and you would have felt like a pussy excuse me you you had to do that you know there was no choice and I'd rather it happen now than when you're living in a town and you have children and you see him like it happened and it's over you know it's like a kind of a closure for Dylan you know does that make sense Griffin yeah no Griffin agrees is yeah. don't you think that was serendipitous? Yeah. I mean, the kids were putting dog shit on his door and they were doing other things while Dylan was down there and yelling at the kid, like, tell him what happened to his brother. Tell him. <laughs> but I was crying because to hear my own son saying that I was asking the kid, what did you do to my brother? Just tell me the truth. What did you do to my brother? I started crying, Jamie, like, oh, shit. You know, like the pain is so deep for Dylan and Griffin and me and you know like and and Dylan was shocked like almost like he came to an aha moment like mom and I'm repeating myself all I wanted was the truth that's what I realized I stopped hitting him because I'm like he's never going to tell me the truth he keeps making up story after story you know yeah yeah okay well I, I love think you. Was, what would the world be like if we all told our truth how fucking safe and great and amazing would it be? Amazing. He goes, try living your life like that. Right. For anybody who's listening, he's like, try it for a day. You just <laughs> share your truth. He said, vomit your truth. Right. That was violent. I don't know where he's going with that. Share your truth. <laughs>